Okay, so now I really want to take a look at looking at a whole bunch of functions and finding their domains. That is, finding all the allowable inputs for x values that would then produce some sort of allowable output. Okay, so let's just start right in and take a look at f of x. That just means this is a function that depends upon x, and here's the recipe. Here's the little machine. x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, there we go. Now the question is, what are the allowable x values? Those x values that I could actually put in here where this would actually produce a legal, honest to goodness, real number. Answer? Well, let's see. What x values or what restrictions would I have to place on it? If I have any x value at all, any number at all, think of your favorite number or even your least favorite number, you can always take that number and you can square it. That gives you another number. Fine. Then you can always subtract the original number away from that and add 1. So in fact, the domain of this is everything. All the allowable x's would be the reals. So the domain here, domain, would be all the real numbers. Again, I'm using this little notation for, for reals. Because any x value is allowable. So that wasn't too bad. How about this one? This next function I'll call g of x. Remember, that's just the name for it. I could have called it Sam of x or Mary of x. Doesn't make a difference. I'm calling it g. 3 minus 4x, and I take the square root of the whole show. The whole show, the whole show. I don't know if you can see that. Everything. OK. Well, what's the domain of this function? What are the allowable x values that I could plug in? Well, let's think about it for a second. I'm taking the positive square root of this quantity. So the only allowable x's are those x's for which this entire thing under the radical is going to be positive. So what I have to actually do is, is actually write down an inequality and then solve an inequality. So the ability to solve inequalities now comes in handy here. So let's see. I'd want 3 minus 4x to be greater than or equal to 0. And now I want to solve that. So let's see. How, how would I solve that? Well, uh, one thing I could do is bring the, the uh, 3 over to the other side. It would become a negative 3. So I, I subtract 3 from both sides. And I would have a minus 4x greater than or equal to minus 3. Even though I'm subtracting 3 from both sides, the sign doesn't flip in this case, because I'm just adding or subtracting something from both sides. doesn't change the inequality. OK, but now I want to divide both sides by negative 4. And so what do I see? I see that x, I'll have x on this side, and here I'll have minus 3 fourths. And what's the sign? What's the sign? Uh, to put here. Well, you may be tempted just to keep the sign. But that is a classic mistake. That's right, it's classic mistake number seven. It's the multiplying the inequality mistake. It's a classic mistake. It definitely makes my top 10 list. You have to remember that when you multiply an inequality or divide an inequality by a negative sign, that inequality symbol flips over. So in fact, here, it should look like this. Classic mistake. And I hope that, that you will never do it. So the domain for this function, g, would be all the values for x that are less than or equal to minus 3 fourths. And if you look back on that, you see that, oh, wait, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. I made a little typo here. I made a little typo here, a little typo. Maybe you saw it. Maybe you saw it. But look, if I'm dividing both sides by, by negative, I, look at this major typo. In fact, I wouldn't call that a little typo. I call that, if I were grading this, I would be very harsh on myself. This should be a minus sign here. And if that's a minus sign, then a minus and a minus makes this a plus. Sorry about that. I have to be honest, I didn't catch that one myself. So that means that the only allowable values that I could put in for x in this function g are any value for x that's less than or equal to 3 fourths. Look what happens if I put in a value bigger than 3 fourths. For example, Let's say I put in the value 1, which is bigger than 3 fourths. If I put in the value 1 for x, look what happens. I see 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. And I'm taking the square root of negative 1. No! That's not going to happen, because that would not give me a real number. That's an imaginary number. So in fact, the only values for x which give me real numbers are the values of x that are less than or equal to 3 fourths. Now, uh, let's take a look at another example. And the other example, an another example. I'll call this function h. I'm just trying to show you that you can call these things anything you want. So this was going to be called h of x, x minus 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. 
There's the function. I want to find the domain. I want to find all the allowable x's. Take any number x. If you subtract 1, that's a completely fine number. Take any number x, square it, subtract 5 times itself, and add 6. That's, any, that's a completely fine number. But what about when you take that quotient? Well, you can take the quotient of any two numbers as long as the denominator isn't 0. So in fact, the domain of this will be any value at all for x except those values that make this equal to 0. So let's find out those restrictions by taking the bottom and equal and setting it equal to 0, equating it to 0. You can see now sort of all the stuff that you thought about in terms of factoring, solving inequalities, and so forth actually come into play in just finding the domain of a function. Um, let's see, the signs are going to be the same and they're going to be negative. And see, the product has to be 6 and they have to combine to be minus 5, so 2 and 3 seem to work really well. So the denominator can be factored in this way. And so when is the denominator 0? Either that is 0, which means x equals 2, or this term is 0, which means x equals 3. So therefore, what I see is the domain of this function h are all the values for x except 2, the number 2 and the number 3. So here the domain. would be everyone except, and what would it be? It would be except uh, 2 and 3. So um, anyway, the point is the domain is everywhere, every single person except x equals 2 and 3. You could write the following way. That's sort of a funny way to write something. Domain is everyone except that. You could say the domain is all the real numbers except, so I'll sort of say like, you know, minus the numbers 2 and 3. This notation just means, by the way, it's just notation. It means, it means all the people that are real except for, like sort of like minus, you know, but remove the number 2 and the number 3. Okay? So there's the, there's the domain there. And let's do one last one together. k of x equals x minus 2 over x squared plus 3x minus 10. So again, I see it's a fraction. So all I care about is when the bottom is 0 and I have to avoid those points. So I see x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals 0. And if I factor that, I'd have an x and an x. This negative sign means I'm going to have opposite signs here, so plus and a minus. They have to combine to give 10. I have to multiply to give 10 and combine to give 3 when I subtract them. So let's see. That looks like a 5 and a 2 are going to work well. And I should put the 5 by the positive and the 2 here. And they combine to give me uh, plus 3. So if, these, if this product equals 0, then either this term equals 0, which means x equals minus 5, or this term equals 0, which means x equals 2. So those are the places we have to avoid. But other than that, we can take any other value any other real number at all, and plug it into the top and plug it into the bottom, and we'll get a real number. So in fact, the domain here would be all the real numbers, I'll use this new notation, except for, so it's avoiding, the numbers minus 5 and 2. That's the notation, which just means everybody except for these guys here. So that's the domain. So basically, bottom line, if you have no denominators, no square roots, you're probably cool. If you've got square roots, make sure the things in the square roots are always positive or 0. Otherwise, you're not in the domain. And if you've got a fraction, always make sure that bottom is not 0. Now, one last point about this one. Suppose you are really, 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 really on top of things, and you're trying to be slick. You know, slick. I'm slick. What could you have done? You could have said, hey, if I would have factored early on in life, something interesting would have, would, have, would have come to pass. Here's the factorization of the bottom. So in fact, I could say that k equals x minus 2 divided by, and then I factor the bottom like we did before, x plus 5 and x minus 2. And if you were really slick, slick, you would have said, hey, I could cancel the factor of x minus 2 on the top with the bottom, which is completely legal, by the way. If you want to do that, you can do that. And then you'd say, oh, OK. Well, that means that k equals 1 over x plus 5. 
And so when is the bottom there equal to 0? Only when x equals minus 5. So maybe, in fact, the domain, I'm allowed to plug in 2 now. I'm allowed to plug in 2 now because it doesn't make the bottom 0. So what went wrong? What went wrong is whenever you cancel, you can only cancel if you're not dividing by 0. So the moment you canceled, you made a promise. You made a covenant with the problem. And that covenant was that you're not dividing by 0. So by canceling, you're promising me that x does not equal 2. So in fact, if you're going to do any kind of little algebraic gymnastics here, which, which is great, you have to remember to play by the rules, which means that if you're going to cancel a common factor, you must record that x can't equal 2, and therefore it would appear right here. If you didn't do that, you might have gotten an answer of just all the real numbers except for uh, minus 5. And that wouldn't have been quite right. So really be careful. When you cancel things away, those things you're canceling can't be 0. Otherwise, when you do this, you'll see the correct answer, everybody except minus 5 and 2. Enjoy finding the domain of these functions.